Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with EC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is a system that has a frozen suction line. So what you're going to have is you're going to have this suction line frozen all the way back to the compressor, and what that means is that you have either a low airflow, a liquid line restriction, or low refrigerant charge. It would take a while for a liquid line restriction to end up freezing the suction line, uh, so it's not as likely to have that, but the reality is this is going to have to get defrosted before I can actually check the charge and see what the problem is. You see that the port is here, it's under the ice, so I'm not going to chip away at that or anything like that. I'm just going to go ahead and let it defrost naturally. Anytime that you see this frozen here, you're going to have a frozen evaporator coil. And what that means is at this point, you're not going to have any airflow going out of the supply registers. For a blower motor such as a PSE, it's not going to get damaged too, too much just by uh, the blockage of the coil. But if you have a, a variable speed ECM motor or just a standard ECM multi-speed motor, those ones could get damaged just due to the blockage at that coil. What will happen is an ECM motor will end up trying to push through any friction through that coil, such as uh, it being partially frozen. But at this point, an ECM blower motor may be damaged. This one, however, has a PSE blower motor. A PSE means that it has a capacitor attached to it, a permanent split capacitor. Anytime that you see that the suction line is frozen, that means that for that to even have begun to start, the vapor line has to be below 32 degrees. Now that could have happened due to having no heat to absorb because of a low airflow problem. It could be because it's just low on refrigerant and the suction pressure is just way too low it could be a liquid line restriction which would lower that pressure below 32 degrees and it'll take a little bit longer for that evaporator coil to freeze compared to a, a low airflow or liquid line restriction problem but eventually that entire coil is going to freeze and it's going to freeze all the way back out to this compressor. Now if the system has a piston metering device the compressor will be getting damaged due to saturated refrigerant coming back into the compressor inlet. Now a TXV is not going to allow as much refrigerant across the evaporator coil and the reason for that is it's trying to maintain a set superheat. So if there's no heat to absorb on that evaporator coil, it's going to lower the amount of refrigerant going into the evaporator coil down to its lowest setting. If you want to learn more about refrigerant troubleshooting when you have a frozen line, check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. I go over the pressures, the superheat, the subcooling the saturated temperature on the vapor line, the delta T, and other indicators to tell you if the problem is a liquid line restriction, low airflow, or the system is low on refrigerant. You can check out that book over at acservicetech.com. We have sample pages in the full outline there. Now let's go ahead and defrost this suction line. So here you have the evaporator coil and it's frozen solid, and we're gonna have to melt this, but the issue with it is it's going to go ahead and melt down into the furnace because there's no way to catch the uh, the ice and the water that's on the underside of the coil that's not going to be caught by the condensate pan. But once this is all melted, then we can go ahead and check the refrigerant charge. So this evaporator coil is now unfrozen, and this system has a piston as a metering device. So that means that there's no control of the superheat and the refrigerant flow across this evaporator coil. So that means we have saturated refrigerant entering the compressor at a higher rate than if we had a thermostatic expansion valve here. Now I'm going to put this cover back on and I'm going to go ahead and check the refrigerant charge outside. We do have good airflow. I just checked that with this cover on and we actually have very good airflow. So the, uh, the issue is either going to be a liquid line restriction or a low refrigerant charge. Now I'm hooked up with my gauge set and my temp meter on the outdoor unit ports. So all the tubes in the evaporator coil are all melted and now I'm going to go ahead and turn this unit on. So we're reading T1 right now, and T1 is taped onto the vapor line within a couple inches of the service port, and we have T2 on the liquid line. So what we're going to pay attention to first right here is we're going to pay attention to the saturated temperature and the pressure on the low side too. As you can see, we are low on pressure. So it's basically within the first three minutes you want to see and make sure that this saturated temperature on the low side is up above 32 degrees. We have plenty of airflow inside the building and if this stays below 32 degrees and we have a high superheat, 
So right now, just for instance, we have 50 degrees on this vapor line and 20 degrees here, that's 30 degrees of superheat. That is a little high, but we do need to wait and see if this rises. But if, if this has a high superheat and low saturated temperature on the low side, then we have a refrigerant leak. We are low on refrigerant then. But we do have to give it just a little bit of time here. On the opposite side, if you check the refrigerant charge and you give it too much time, that evaporator coil is just going to go ahead and freeze again, and you want to figure out what's happening before the evaporator coil freezes. Let's check our subcooling level. So our subcooling presently is one to two degrees, maybe. So we are at 74 degrees over here on the green inner ring. So anytime you're trying to check your saturated temperature of the outdoor condenser coil, you're going to read your pressure and you're going to bring it into the saturated temperature of that particular refrigerant. This one happens to be R22, so it's the green inner ring. So we're reading 74 degrees minus 73 degrees. Actually on this line, we have one degree of subcoin. We're low on refrigerant here. Let's look over here on our vapor line again. Our superheat is increasing. So anytime you have high superheat, it's an indication of a refrigerant leak. So right now we're reading 14 degrees saturated temperature on the low side, and we have 55 degrees actually on the line. So to read the total superheat, we take 55 degrees minus 14 degrees, and we're left with 41 degrees of superheat. Anytime that this saturated temperature is below 32 degrees, that evaporator coil will freeze. So we don't have to stay here much longer. It looks like we're low on refrigerant. Yep. Now we have, we're reading no subcooling right here. So we got 74 degrees, green in a ring, minus 74. Zero degrees of subcooling. Typically, when you check a system that has a piston, you really want to wait for that system to run for 10 or 15 minutes to get an accurate refrigerant charge. For a system that has a thermostatic expansion valve, five to 10 minutes, you can you can get an accurate refrigerant charge uh, reading. But when you have a frozen evaporator cool scenario, you really don't have that long to diagnose your problem. So high superheat and low subcooling is an indication of a low refrigerant charge. If you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge and troubleshooting by reading the, the gauges, the superheat, the subcooling, the delta T, and the low side saturated temperature, I have a book out that's the Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. There's a link for that down in the description below, but you can check that out over at ecservicetech.com. So now that we determine that we have a low refrigerant charge, I'm going to have to turn this unit off and look for that leak. If you're looking for videos on searching for refrigerant leaks, I have them linked in the description section below. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.